Welcome back to High Neighbor, I'm Ned Moultrie. And I'm Laird Davis. This week, we are going to learn about some different methods of self-care that students can indulge in with the possible stress of exams approaching. As overwhelming as the end of the semester can be, it's important for us to take some time to ourselves to do things that make us happy and can help us relax. Whether that means seeking help from resources or participating on campus activities, it's important to find your own getaway and healthy coping mechanisms. Join us in finding out what some of those may be as we say, Hi, Hi neighbor. neighbor. The Appalachian Mental Health Ambassadors are peer educators that promote awareness of mental health issues through educational presentations and student interaction. They work to keep the conversation about mental health issues in an open and comfortable environment. Here today to tell us more about the importance of this ambassador program is Sydney Muschietti. Sydney, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about what it's like being a mental health ambassador. So a lot of what mental health ambassadors do is kind of try to break the stigma around mental health on campus because it's something very difficult to talk about, especially since like college students may not be as, you know, open about these type of things. So to kind of try to break that barrier, we'll have like presentations and like any class if anybody wants to request it or we'll have tables sometimes in the union about a counseling center and other things. But mainly like what the goal of mental health ambassadors is to really, like I just said earlier, break that like barrier and stigma that's around mental health. So uh, Sydney, you're a junior, but what inspired you to become a mental health ambassador? So I'm a psychology major and the main reason I kind of like went into mental health ambassadors is because it kind of aligns with my interests. So, I've always kind of been somewhat passionate about mental health, whether it was like through seeing it through others or maybe even my own mental health. And I just think it's a great opportunity to really like talk about these type of issues that we may be experiencing because it's like really hard to open up to somebody about this. And I think mental health ambassadors has been a great way for me to like advocate for better mental health and to really just talk about it and even address some of my own issues. And uh, you t mentioned earlier the tables that you do, contact tables, as yep. well as the presentations. Um, but how do you get in touch with people in the first place? Because I know that for a lot of people, especially in college, the biggest issue is actually uh, drumming up the bravery to take that first step and actually reach out for help. Right. So um, presentations, like I said, you can request, I think it's through Emily Lazar. Um, now, as far as like going to the counseling center, uh, so initial consultations, uh, you can just walk in. I believe the walk-in hours are from 9 to 11 and 1 to 4. And you can just walk in and you'll fill out a form while you're there and then they'll see you right away. So it's just the matter of like taking the first step to really like go into the counseling center and realize that you may need help or maybe you don't need help. and. We also have free screenings online on the Counseling Center website, and they're anonymous. So even if you don't feel like going into the Counseling Center, you can go online and maybe even take like a little screening to see how your mental health is and how you may be doing. And so I take it you guys work pretty closely with the Counseling Center in <laughs> terms of like coordinating and offering services? Uh, so mental health ambassadors doesn't really like offer services. We kind of just represent the counseling center uh, and kind of help, you know, talk about like mental health issues and, you know, encourage students to seek help if they need it. Okay. And uh, when it comes to getting, like becoming a mental health ambassador, what kind of training do you have to go through? Do you have to go through training? Uh, so you actually apply in the spring and I believe if you go on the Counseling Center website, you can find all that information there, but you apply in the spring um, and you fill out a form and have a couple of references. They interview you and before school starts in the fall, there's like two training days where they go over the presentations and all of the necessary information. So uh, when it comes to actually being a mental health ambassador, you mentioned earlier that it actually has helped you to sort of address your own yeah. issues. Uh, what have been some of the biggest challenges or benefits that come with being a mental health ambassador? Benefits is that 
I think it's really allowed me to talk to people in a different way. I've had people approach me, whether they're concerned about their friends or themselves, and to just really talk to me openly about what they're feeling. And that's something that I've never really experienced in the past because, like I said, sometimes people are just afraid to, you know, voice that. And I completely understand that. But it's very rewarding when somebody, like, comes to you and, like, talks about these things with you because it shows a sign of trust. Um, but, yeah, I don't – I can't think of any drawbacks. I, I love it. Yeah. And so um... – I know I've had this uh, experience this in the past, but I'm sure that there are plenty of people this semester who are uh, going through a rough time currently and are looking to like reach out or you know are w wanting to seek help. But w uh, how would you say they should get started if they're looking for help? Right. So, like I said earlier, the you know you can walk in for initial consultation hours whenever. Um, now, like the follow-up meeting may take a little longer just because of scheduling, whether you want a particular counselor or anything like that. So as far as like after the initial consultation, it may take a minute. But like I said, you can go and like see a counselor during the hours I said earlier. I believe it's 8.30 to 11 and then 1 to 4. So, yeah. And for a person who's interested in pursuing becoming a mental health ambassador, how do they get started with that? So, like I said earlier, you apply in the spring, and then you, like, fill out the form and get some references, and then if, you know, they like your application and your references, they'll call you back for an interview. Uh, what are some of your ideas for the future of the mental health ambassadors, and what kind of, what are your goals for how they interact with uh, the mental health of both campus and the Boone community in the near future? Um, so I think the biggest thing is just being like really open and honest about everything because I think like sometimes as mental health ambassadors we may have the tendency to like gloss things over or make it seem like everything's fine with us but of course we also too experience some things so I think like a really big thing is just being honest and open and kind with everybody and just kind of creating that welcoming space that some people may not find. Well, uh, as someone who has had to deal with some of these things in the past, I can only give you so much thanks here on camera for the, what you guys do. Uh, you work uh, doing an incredibly important thing, helping people take that first step towards handling stress and handling some of the mental burden that comes with college. So once again, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Stay tuned on this episode of High Neighbor to catch an inside look at other ways to take a breather in the high country. My name is Erin and I work both with the outreach program at the Turchin Center and also the exhibitions team. So I'm involved with helping take art into the community and underserved communities and different groups and then also doing the installation side of things in the gallery itself. Open Studio is a class, one of the many classes that Turchin Center offers and it is free to students and it's basically for anyone to come in and we provide the materials and they can feel free to create. It's not very structured. We do have other classes that are more structured, kind of follow along paint nights and things like that, but this is kind of the most free flowing so students can come in and just have some creative time by themselves or with others. We try and provide an array of materials and different mediums, so canvases, watercolor paper, different paints, watercolors, colored pencils, crayons, markers, collage materials, all the whole works. And if students um, want something that we don't have, we try and do our best to provide that and find it elsewhere and bring it. I love watching how other people create. I personally am a photographer and a video maker, so I am not gifted in the way of painting and drawing. And a lot of people that come in are not art students, so it's really fun to watch people who don't necessarily have that artistic inclination come in and just kind of see what happens and let it flow and see what they can create. Probably the most rewarding thing is when people walk away with a smile on their face and like they've had a good time. So even people who aren't artists or just kind of here for a class assignment, they leave saying that they had fun and that's just really exciting. It's getting people excited about art. <laughs> I think it's good, even if you're not coming consistently, to kind of pause from your studies and your classes and whatever you're doing to kind of 
mentally go somewhere else, whether that be music or an art class or what have you. I would try and be better about opening up to the people that I was close to and using that as like a sounding board for any issues I was having. Maybe checking out the different counseling services that we have and I was pretty involved with the arts so I had that kind of outlet. Um, but maybe just kind of seeking more professional resources if there was a serious problem. My name is John. Um, I'm a senior graduating in December. I'm a rec management major, um, commercial rec concentration. Um, I mainly enjoy like doing things outside, like riding bikes, um, engaging in physical activity. This is my first time attending the Open Studio. Um, we have to do it for a class called Inclusive Recreation. The way I use art as self-care is listening to music um, and, and dancing to music sometimes. Really, it, like I haven't thought about any other part of my day except for just doing the art, it's kind of nice. Um, stressful times towards the end of the semester right now. And um, yeah, it was just kind of a, a good um, way to just breathe and relax. We have lots of different classes that we offer. This is one of the more free spirited ones. So be sure to check out our website, tcva.org and see all the different options that we have. And we hope to see you come out for a class. Um, exercise, listening to uh, music. Uh, I like to watch the Great British Bake Off and have a cup of tea and eat some chocolates. Crying, that's fine. It's okay to cry. It's a good way to release your emotions. Um, talking to friends, listening to music. I think those are really helpful ways to de-stress. Uh, currently is writing, um, writing, cleaning, and I listen to music, things like that have really you know, got my mind off the main things that I stress about. Ways that I de-stress are by reading or taking a walk and listening to music or listening to audiobooks as well. For me, it's like the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I'm just having a bad day, you know, the gym just kind of like, I just isolate myself from all those stress things, and just lift weights, which really helps me out with many things. Uh, it's just been like a really warm community, you know? Like I, it's like an inviting place where I don't feel like I have to, uh, keep up appearances, you know? I can be myself, and that in itself is like kind of uh, relaxing, comforting. Um, I think app provides a space that makes people feel comfortable, and it's a safe environment, so wherever you go in your day on campus, I feel like you can find a spot to just distress and sit down and keep to yourself if you need to. I myself have gone to the counseling center a few times, and I think it's really helpful. The process is a bit lengthy, but if you really need help, they're there for you. Um, they've really connected me with lots of good communities that have, like, the times I spend with those friends, that community I've made there, it takes me away from, from what I'm overwhelmed by. Just giving me the opportunity to go different places where, you know, having silence, sit, and just relax sometimes. Just having, having, like, a really nice and beautiful place to walk around in, yeah. Just, just like, places around here, you know, just looking at everything. Going to the library relieves my stress because I'm just by myself, like, on the third floor. It's just, like, the silent study. I'm just by myself doing my own thing. That's it for this week's episode. Thank you for joining us as we learn today about the importance of self-care. We hope everything we discussed today will encourage you to build time into your schedule to do stress and find unique ways to relax on and off campus. And make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at watchapptv.com and check out our YouTube channel, AppTV, for more content. Until next time, bye, bye neighbor. neighbor.